Hi, we're here at PCI SIG DEVCON 2018, and I'm going to be showing a demonstration of our PCI Express 5.0 controller IP. So taking a look at our demo, we start in Gen 1 in order to be able to negotiate and get up to a Gen 5 speed. So following the PCI Express specification, we're in Gen 1, detect quiet, we move through some various configuration steps, we do some equalization, to transition to Gen 3, and you see here, we moved into PCI Express Gen 3 speed. And then we go through another equalization set here. You see these steps, recovery equalization. We move into Gen 4, and then ultimately, another equalization step, and we successfully move to Gen 5, with the final result being that we enter L0 at the very end here. What you're seeing below here is our verification IP, which is running against the controller. So the controller is talking to the verification IP. Uh, verification IP is showing the same things, but here we're showing that it's 2.5 gig for Gen 1, 8 gig for Gen 3, 16 gig for Gen 4, and 32 gig for Gen 5. So let's zoom in real close for a second so we can see that this is in fact Gen 4. Gen 4 we know is 16 gigabits per second. If I zoom into this uh, data rate here and take a look at this uh, measurement, you can see right here 62.5 picoseconds. If you do the math, that shows that we're working at 16 gigatransfers per second. If I zoom back out and I do the same thing over here, looking at Gen 5, you can see it's tougher to zoom in because the transactions are that much faster, twice as fast. So again, if I look at the link, the serial data rate here, I get 31.25 picoseconds which is showing that we are successfully transmitting receiving data at PCI Express Gen 5 speeds of 32 gigatransfers per second. And again, we see the ver verification IP uh, echoing essentially the same thing. One other interesting thing to note here is once we enter L0, it looks like the verification IP is mimicking the same response, but actually you can see when you zoom in, once we enter L0, there's another state that has to go through here where we have to negotiate credits and actually move into the active state. And that's what's showing as we move from here, finally, to DL active. Now, one of the things that we're able to do with the PCI Express Gen 5 controller, as well as our core consultant interface, is to do architectural exploration at your desk. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at an example. Let's take a look at our core consultant interface. We look at the basic features configuration table. First, what you see here is the various speed modes. We support different speed modes. Um, there's uh, Gen 1 4S, that's four symbols. Um, you can see there's other ones that you can select for Gen 5, two symbols, four symbols, eight symbols. Um, so you can select those here. And then there's a bunch of other uh, features. If I look here, this is where we can set the simultaneously outstanding requests or the tags. Um, so let's go ahead and take this design down to two tags. Now, in general, that's not very many tags and it's gonna limit the performance. But this gives you an example of how you can use this tool to tailor your link to get the best performance. So, I go down here now and I say apply. So I'll go and select the setup and run simulations. And Core Consultant now will take the RTL file that was just generated from this configuration with two tags. And um, by hitting apply here, I can go ahead and run uh, these simulations. Let's take a look at what I would be running. So the test bench has a number of different options. We can look at feature tests where I can just look at different features we've inserted into the IP. Um, there's subsystem tests, system tests, and what we're gonna look at here is performance tests. I wanna see the throughput. That's the main thing I'm after here today. So let's go ahead and apply this and see the result. Okay, so this would actually take about 15 minutes. So we've just cut to the result, which I've already generated. Um, looking at two tags here, something really obvious jumps out at us. We're only getting 2.872 gigabytes per second out of a theoretical possibility of 41.444. So we're losing 93% of the link bandwidth. This would obviously be a terrible choice. You wouldn't want to implement this. So let's take a look at a more realistic choice here. Let's say if we go back in here to our specified configuration. Give it a second to catch up. And now, if we go into this tag width, we're gonna change it to 32, something a little more realistic. Uh, don't know if that's ideal yet, but this is one of the beauties of Core Consultant. You can try this out at your desktop. 
you run the, you can compile the RTL, you can run the simulations. So let's take a look at this. So again, we'll we'll now pick up the RTL we just generated, and we'll go ahead and run these same uh, performance test benches that you see here. Go ahead and apply that. And again, we're not waiting for this to get done. So I go to the results file. Look at 32 links now. Big difference here. Now we're up to 38, roughly, gigabytes per second, compared to an ideal 43.307. So we're only losing 12% of the link bandwidth. That's still pretty much, right? We're trying to get every bit of performance out of our design. So I'll look at one more example here um, and really push this and see what we can get. <clears throat> so we'll go back to the configuration. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and, and select 128 tags. Hit apply. Again, I'll pick up the RTL on the other end, and then I'll run the simulation test bench, same one we were running before for performance. And let's take a look at those results. Now, when I look at the results here, I actually have no loss. I've selected a number of outstanding tags that's sufficient to handle this kind of traffic, and it gives me the maximum theoretical bandwidth for this link. This concludes our demonstration of our IP for PCI Express 5.0. Thanks for watching.